We can't see it. We can't feel it. We can't hear it. We can't touch it. And yet we cower in our homes for fear of the viral invader we call COVID-19. This invisible force is changing the world, changing the way we do life, changing people and causing us to fear and doubt the things that we've always taken for granted. The Easter story continues and tells how the world of the disciples was changed as well. Let's listen to that story as told by John in his Gospel, chapter 20 from verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Friend, I want you to notice with me that Jesus did not blame Thomas for doubting. Yet so often... The church's handling of doubt is to couple it with disbelief and then squash it. But Jesus never condemned Thomas. I think that Jesus understood that once Thomas had worked through his doubts, he would become one of the surest men in all of Christendom. I must admit that I am dubious of people who say that they have never had any doubts, people who always seem so sure of themselves. I would suggest to you that any person who places himself beyond doubt places himself above Jesus himself. On the cross, even Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why? You can finish the rest of that phrase for yourself, but I want you to hear the why in it. You see, authentic faith always begins with intellectual honesty. Putting it another way, faith is not the absence of doubt. Rather, it is the overcoming of doubt. I have had my doubts. I have been standing by graveside on an icy winter day when the bitter cold wind chapped my face. And I have heard the cries of families at having lost someone closer to them than life itself. And I have thought silently to myself, sometimes life is so meaningless. Alfred Lloyd Tennyson said, There lives more faith in honest doubt than in half the creeds of the world. So friend, when you find yourself crying out as the disciple of old, Lord, I believe, help me in my unbelief, know that Jesus does not condemn or blame you in your searching for honest answers to life. 
But friend, we must move beyond doubt to faith. Thomas may have doubted, but when he saw the resurrected Lord, faith began to take root in his heart. And once faith took root, Thomas cried, My Lord and my God! He was then sent to pronounce to the world, along with the other disciples, that forgiveness had come. How the world has been changed by this forgiveness. And it all began with doubt. D.T. Niles has a fascinating story that a bishop once told his congregation. And it goes like this. Three university students of Paris were walking along the road one good Friday afternoon. They noticed crowds of people going to the churches to make their confession. The students began to discuss this custom of the unenlightened and talked in rather cynical terms about the survival of religion, which they described as superstition. Suddenly, Two of the students turned to the third, which was the leader among them, and said to him, Will you go into this church and tell the priest there what we've been saying to each other? Sure, I will, he said, and went in. He stood in the same queue of those who were going to their confession, and when his turn came, he looked at the priest and said, Father, I've come here merely to tell you that Christianity is a dying institution, and that religion is a superstition. The priest looked at the young man keenly and asked, Why did you come here, my son, to tell me this? And the student told him of his conversation with his friends. The priest listened carefully and said, All right, I want you to do one thing for me before you go. You accepted the challenge of your friends and came here. Now accept my challenge to you. Walk up to the chancel, and you will find there a large wooden cross, and on it the figure of Jesus crucified. I want you to stand before that cross and say these words, Jesus died for me and I don't care a damn. The student looked defiant, but to save face he agreed. He went up and stood before that cross and said it. Jesus died for me and I don't care a damn. He came back to the priest and said, I've done it. Do it once more, said the priest. After all, it means nothing to you. The student went back and looked at the cross for some time and the figure on it and then stammered out, Jesus died for me. And I don't care a damn. He returned to the priest and said, I've done it, I'm going now. The priest stopped him. Once more, he said, just once more, and you can go. The young man walked up to the chancel and looked at that cross again and at the image of the crucified Jesus. He stood there for a long time. Then he came back to the priest and said, Father, can I make my confession now? The bishop concluded the story with these words. And my dear people, that young man was me. Friend, the times we live in has caused tremendous sorrow and hardship. Quite possibly you have had cause to doubt the sovereignty and the power of Almighty God. He does not judge you on that. But let me ask you a question. What does the gospel of Jesus' death and resurrection mean to you? Do you really need more evidence before you trust him? Let me invite you to place your life and trust in Jesus. Let Jesus conquer your doubts and your fears. Let Jesus become your guide through all the anxieties of your life. Will you pray with me? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for the person who is listening to this message right now. You know their heart and mind.
their worries, their doubts and their fears. They do so really want to trust you, but don't know how to with all that's going on in the world at this time. Hear their prayers. Enable them now to trust you. Where there is a need, Lord, undertake for them. Intervene in a mighty way in their situation. Come and show them that you are indeed our God who is almighty and who cares for his people. Where there is hurt, Lord, come and nurture and restore their hearts to you. Where they need forgiveness, Lord, give them peace and assurance that you have wiped away their every wrong and that they can know that from this moment on they have a renewed life in you and because of you. Father, I also pray, I speak and I declare healing all over the nations of the world. We stand trusting in your promises to protect us and keep us safe. Heal the infected and the affected, for by your stripes we are healed. Touch the minds and the hearts of our leaders to implement only the counsel of God for the nations. Whatever the evil one has planned against the nations of the world is cut off now in Jesus' name. Father, we call upon you to deliver the world so that you will be glorified. I humbly ask that your will be done. I pray now a special blessing over those who have prayed this prayer with me today. I declare and decree your victory in Jesus' name. Amen.